In this video, I'm going to talk about more detail about the ST access. You know that in previous video, we learned about the ST access fundamentals. Here we are reviewing the ST access and also we are learning the detail of ST access. First, what is ST access? ST access has two main components, Cisco Campus Fabric Solution and Cisco DNA Center. You know that the Campus Fabric is a Cisco validated fabric overlay solution that includes all of the features and protocols like control plane, data plane, management plane, and policy plane to operate the network infrastructure. When the campus fabric solution is managed using the command line interface or CLI or an application programming interface API using network configuration protocol NetConf and Yang, this solution is considered to be campus fabric solution. When the campus fabric solution is managed via the Cisco DNA center, the solution is considered to be SD access. Now let me to explain about the SD access architecture. Cisco SD access is based on existing hardware and software technologies. What makes Cisco SD access special is how these technologies are integrated and managed together. The Cisco SD access fabric architecture can be divided into four basic layers as you can see here. Physical layer, network layer, controller layer, layer and also management layer. As you can see in the physical layer, we can have multiple type of devices like the switch, rotors, wireless, or a wireless, uh, for example, LAN controller, lightweight access points, Cisco DNA center, and Cisco ICE. Okay, actually, while Cisco SD access is designed for user simplicity, abstraction, and virtual environments, everything runs on top of physical network devices, namely switches, routers, servers, wireless LAN controllers, and wireless access points or APs. All Cisco network devices that actively participate in the SD access fabric must support all of the hardware A6 means application specific integrated circuits and also FPGAs field programmable gate arrays and also they should have some software requirement. Okay, let me to emphasize that the following uh, are the physical layer devices that we can have in the SD1 fabric. For example, Cisco switch, C switch provide wire LAN access to the fabric okay multiple type of Cisco catalyst switches are supported as well as Nexus switches about the Cisco routers routers provide van and branch access to the fabric multiple type of Cisco ASR 1000 ISR and CSR routers including the CSRV and ISRV cloud routers are supported about the Cisco wireless Cisco wireless uh, LAN controllers and uh, access uh, points provide wireless or WLAN access to the fabric and also about the Cisco controller appliance Cisco DNA center and Cisco ICE are two controller appliance uh, required also let me to emphasize that Cisco access layer switches that do not actively participate in the SD access fabric but that are part of it because of automation okay are referred to as SD access extension nodes actually we can say in physical layer we have switches we have rotors wireless devices cisco dna center and cisco ice okay and also we have some st access extension nodes and you know that the extension node is a node that not actively participate in the st access fabric but that are part of it okay because of automation because of that we call them st access extension nodes the next layer is the network layer the network layer consists of the un underlay network and the overlay network. These two sub layers work together to deliver data packets to and from the network device participating in the SD access. All this network layer information is made available to the controller layer. The network underlay is the underlying physical layer and its role purpose is to transport data packets between network devices for the SD access fabric overlay the overlay network is a virtual tunneled network that virtually interconnects all of the network devices forming a fabric of interconnected nodes it abstracts the inherent complexities and limitation of the 
underlay network here you can see the underlay network include uh, some switches okay some other devices okay here we have edge devices endpoints and this is the underlay and also you can see after creating the VXLAN tunnels we have the overlay network in this overlay network you can see only the edge nodes and also some tunnels between them the detail of the underlay here is not uh, for example available actually this figure shows a visual representation of the relationship between an overlay network and also the underlay network about the underlay network the underlay network for sd access should be configured to ensure performance scalability and high availability because any problems with the underlay can affect the operation of the fabric overlay while it is possible to use a layer 2 network underlay design running a spanning tree protocol or stp it is not recommended the recommended design for the network underlay is to use a layer 3 rotated access campus design using ISIS as the IGP. ISIS or intermediate system to intermediate system offers operational advantage such as neighbor establishment without IP dependencies, peering capabilities using loopback addresses and agnostic treatment of IPv4, IPv6 and non-IP traffic, okay? Two models of underlay are supported. Manual underlay. This type of underlay network is configured and managed manually such as with a CLI or an a application programming interface rather than through Cisco DNA Center. An advantage of the manual underlay is that it allows customization of the network to fit any special design requirements such as changing the IGP to OSPF. In addition, it allows ST access to run on top of a legacy or third party IP based networks. The next method of implementation of the underlay is automated underlay. In a fully automated network underlay, all aspects of the underlay network are configured and managed by the Cisco DNA Center LAN automation feature. The LAN automation feature creates an ISIS routed access campus design and uses the Cisco network plug and play features to deploy both unicast and multicast routing configuration in the underlay to improve traffic delivery efficiency for SD access. An automated underlay eliminates misconfiguration and reduces the complexity of the network underlay. It also greatly simplifies and speeds the building of the network underlay. A downside to an un automated underlay is that it does not allow manual customization for a special design requirement. As a result, as a summary, we can say for underlay network configuration, we have two choices, manual underlay and also automated underlay and you know that one of the benefits of the sd access is the automated underlay i explained these features in the previous video here we are reviewing uh, them with a little more detail and with a uh, uh, for example more advanced features all right now let me to explain about the overlay network sd access fabric actually okay you can say sd access fabric means both overlay and underlay but in some cases we call the, ST, the overlay network as the sd access fabric the sd access fabric is the overlay network and it provides policy based network segmentation host mobility for wired and wireless hosts and enhanced security beyond the normal switching and routing capabilities of a traditional network in sd access the fabric overlay is fully automated regardless of the underlay network model used manual or automated it includes all the necessary overlay control plane protocols and addressing as well as all global configuration associated with operation of the st access fabric it means that if you configure manually or automatically the underlay we will have Auto automated overlay okay it is not depend in any dependency it is not have it does not have any dependency to the underlay configuration it also possible to manually configure the overlay network without using dna center however when the overlay network is managed via the cli or api using netconf and yang the solution is considered to be as to be a campus fabric solution and not st access because of that in st access uh, always we configure overlay with automated method actually automated uh, automatically the overlay will establish but you can configure underlay and with uh, two method manual and automated 
As mentioned earlier, the Cisco SD Access fabric is based on multiple existing technologies. The combination of these technologies and the automated management provided by a Cisco okay, DNA Center makes Cisco SD Access powerful and unique. There are three basic planes of operations in the SD Access fabric. Okay, control plane based on uh, locator ID separation protocol or LISP data plane based on virtual extensible LAN or VXLAN and policy plane based on Cisco TrustSec. We will learn about all of them in this class. Actually, when we talk about the SD access, uh, here we have three plane, control plane that provided by a uh, LISP, data plane provided by, v by VXLAN and policy plane uh, provided by the Cisco TrustSec. In the previous video, we learned a little about the LISP and VXLAN and also a little about the security. But here we will learn with more detail about these uh, uh, three planes. First, let me to explain about the SD access control plane. The SD Access Fabric Control Plane is based on Locator ID Separation Protocol or LISP. LISP is an IETF standard protocol defined in RFC 6830 that is based on a simple endpoint ID EID to routing locator or look mapping system to separate the identity endpoint IP address from its current location network edge border router IP address. Okay, actually we are separating the identity from the current location of the device. Okay, LISP dramatically simplifies traditional routing environment environment by eliminating the need for each router to process every possible IP destination address and route it. It does this by moving remote destination information to a centralized mapping database called the LISP map server or MS as you can see here this is the mapping server or MS a control plane node in the SD access which allows each router to manage only its local routes and query the map system to local destination EIDs it means that when we receive a traffic in this ITR ingress ton tunnel router only we need to ask from the mapping server or mapping resolver actually to to find the routing locator of the uh, receiver uh, egress tunnel router actually here you don't need to save all of the records inside of the routing table of ITR1 only we need to ask from the mapping server or mapping resolver to find the uh, routing locator of the receiver router this technology provides many advantage for Cisco SD access such as a smaller routing table a dynamic host mobility for wired and wireless endpoints and address agnostic mapping IPv4 IPv6 or Mac and built-in network segmentation through VRF instances. In Cisco SD Access, several enhancements to the original LISP specification have been added, included distributed Anycast gateway and a virtual network extranet and fabric wireless and more features are planned for the uh, future. But here we don't want to talk about all of them only we are uh, for example talking about the SDX architecture with more detail than previous video step by step we will learn about the detail of SD access after that now we know about the SD access control plane and we know that here the LISP is working uh, for providing the control plane of the uh, SDA okay let me to explain a little about the SD access fabric data plane the tunneling technology used for the fabric data plane is based on virtual extensible LAN or VXLAN. VXLAN encapsulate is IP UDP based, meaning that it can be forwarded by any IP based network, legacy or third party, and creates the overlay network for the SD access fabric. Although LISP is the control plane for the SD access fabric, it does not use LISP data encapsulation for the data plane. Instead, it uses VXLAN encapsulation because it is capable of encapsulating the original Ethernet header to perform MAC in IP. IP encapsulation while LISP does not okay actually you know that LISP uh, can uh, work as a control plane protocol and data plane protocol but because LISP in data plane only can transport the, the packet we don't use it in the SD access in the SD access data plane uh, actually we use VXLAN but you know that in SD access for control plane we use LISP for in data plane we use 
uh, VXLAN. But if you want, you can implement uh, the network. Uh, in, the, in that network, the Lisp can be control plane and also data plane. The, the most important difference between the Lisp and VXLAN in the data plane is that the Lisp can uh, forward can uh, encapsulate the packets, but the VXLAN can encapsulate the uh, frame. And it means that when we want to have layer two connectivity or both layer three connectivity, we can use VXLAN. Actually, VXLAN can encapsulate both frame and packet, but uh, Lisp can encapsulate only the, uh, for example, packet. Using VXLAN allows an SD access fabric to support layer 2 and layer 3 virtual topologies or overlays and the ability to operate over any IP based network with built-in network segmentation VRF instance or VN and built-in group based policies okay actually the differences between the Lisp and VXLAN packet formats can be illustrated with this uh, for example figure as you can see we have data original IP Lisp header and here we have UDP header and uh, IP header and Ethernet header and the, uh, here as you can see the original IP header is available and we are encapsulating the um, packet actually but here you can look at here data original IP original Ethernet then VXLAN header then UDP then IP and outer Ethernet header what does it mean we are encapsulating the frame also inside of the Lisp header and inside of VXLAN header we have some features that we can use them for different purposes for example here in the VXLAN header we have VXLAN network identifier or VNI that we can use it for the segmentation in the uh, overlay all right now let me to explain a little about the vxlan and vxlan gpo packet uh, format comparison gpo is the abbreviation of group policy option the original uh, vxlan specification was enhanced for sd access to support cisco trustsec scalable group tags or SGTs. This was accomplished by adding new fields to the first four bytes of the VXLAN header in order to transport up to 64,000 SGT tags. Okay, and after that, the new VXLAN format is called VXLAN Group Policy Option or VXLAN GPO, and it is defined in the IETF draft. Uh, for example, after the original VXLAN, let me to explain it a little. Look at here. We have this. Is is the uh, for example VXLAN GPO and this is the VXLAN original VXLAN encapsulation both of these two encapsulation encaps uh, are encapsulating the frame but here we have some new uh, for example flags let me to explain about them a little here you can see group policy ID okay group policy ID and uh, it, it, it has 16 bit lengths and this is a 16 bit identifier that is used to carry the SGT tag okay after that we have group based policy extension bit or G bit this is the G bit it has one bit field length okay when set to one indicate an SGT tag is being carried within the group policy ID field and set to zero when it is not also we have other bit we call it don't learn bit or D bit again it has one bit field uh, one bit length that when set to one indicate that the egress virtual tunnel endpoint or VTAP must not learn the source address of the encapsulated frame don't worry about the detail the detail is beyond the scope of this video also we have another bit we call it policy applied bit or a bit again here we have one bit this is the policy applied bit or a bit one bit field that is only defined as the a bit when the g bit uh, field is set to one it means that when g bit is set to one and here we have the option of setting the a bit to one or zero when the a bit is set to one it indicates that the group policy has already been applied to this packet and further policies must not be applied by network devices when it is set to zero group policies must be applied by network devices and they must set the a bit to one after the policy has been applied you will learn more than this about the detail of these fields in the uh, future videos but for now we can understand with the help of g bit d bit and a bit and also group policy id we are we have now vxlan gpo a packet format and it can provide us more capabilities related to 
Cisco Trustsec Scalable Group Tags or SGT. Now let me to explain a little about the ST Access Policy Plane or Fabric Policy Plane. I will explain with more detail about this plane in the next parts of this video. But for now, let me to say that the Fabric Policy Plane is based on Cisco TrustSec or CTS. Cisco TrustSec SGT tags are assigned to authenticated groups of users and or end devices. Network policy, for example, ACLs and quality of service is then applied throughout the ST, ST Access access fabric based on the SGT tag instead of a network address, MAC address, IPv4 address, IPv6 address. This allows for the creation of network policies such as security, quality of service, policy-based routing and network segmentation based only on the SGT tag and not the network addresses like the MAC address, IPv4, IPv6 of the user or endpoint. TrustSec SGT tags provide several advantage for Cisco ST access such as support for both network based segmentation using VNs or virtual networks. This is like VRF instances and group based segmentation policies. Network address independent group uh, policies or group based policies based on SGT tag rather than MAC or IPv4 or IPv6 addresses which reduces complexity. Dynamic enforcement of group based policies regardless of location for both wired and wireless traffic. Policy constructs over a legacy or third party network using VXLAN and extended a policy enforcement to external networks such as cloud or data center networks by transporting the tags to Cisco TrustSec aware devices using SGT exchange protocol or SXP. Don't forget if you want to understand everything correctly and with a detail a function you need to implement it or you need to learn about it with more detail. Here only we are reviewing maybe after completing this video you can review from the scratch and again the detail of this video after that you can better understand but again you should continue you should continue learning about the SD access after implementation you would be a master in the uh, for example SD access details uh, like the concepts configuration and some other things but here now only we are reviewing step by step we, we are trying to understand better and better about the SD access you know that in previous video we overviewed the SD access here we are learning ag again about the SD access but with more detail but in future videos again you will learn more and more and finally you uh, can understand everything about the SD access all right now let me to explain about the SD access fabric roles and components the operation of the SD access fabric requires multiple different device roles each with a specific set of responsibilities each SD access enabled network device must be configured for one or more of these roles during the planning and design phase it is important to understand the fabric roles and uh, to select the most appropriate network device for each role. There are five basic device roles in the fabric overlay. I will explain each of them, but for now, let me to say that we have control plane node, fabric border node, fabric edge node, fabric WLAN controller or wireless LAN controller, and intermediate nodes. Okay, let me to explain each of them briefly about the control plane node. This node contains the setting protocols and mapping tables to provide the endpoint to location or EID to our look mapping system for the fabric overlay. I explained it before, but here you can see that, uh, for example, we have fabric control plane node in this device. Okay, you know that here we have a table, a mapping table between the EID or endpoint identifiers and our look. You learned about the uh, list process previously. After that, we have fabric border node. Okay, uh, for example, this is fabric border node, or uh, it can be fab uh, fabric uh, border node. This fabric device, for example, core layer device, connect external layer three networks to the SDA fabrics. This is our SDA fabric, and it uh, with fabric border node we can connect 
connect to the outside of the fabric. Fabric edge node. About the fabric edge node we explained before. This fabric device, for example, access or distribution layer devices connect wired, wired endpoint to the SDA fabric. For example, here you can see that we have fa a fabric edge nodes and it uh, can provide us a uh, wired connectivity to the endpoints. Also, we have Fabric Wireless LAN Controller or WRC. This fabric device connect APs and wireless endpoints to the STA fabric. This is like the Fabric Edge node, but for wireless clients. And finally, intermediate nodes. These are intermediate routers or extended switches that do not provide any sort of ST access fabric role uh, other than underlay services. They are working only in the underlay. Actually, we are establishing overlay tunnels over these devices. They don't know about the overlay. They are residing in the underlay. Look at here, for example, these two switches are uh, the fabric intermediate nodes. Um, for example, we will have a connect uh, or the overlay between a different uh, fabric edge nodes and we, we should pass from the fabric intermediate nodes, but they don't see the overlay. Actually, they are only providing the underlay for us. This figure illustrates the different SDA fabric design roles and how nodes in fabric can play multiple roles. Roles. For example, here fabric border node is also fabric control uh, plane nodes. Okay, uh, here as you can see, the core layer router in this figure are acting as a fabric border node and also a control plane nodes. All right, now let me to explain with a little more detail about uh, some of these uh, components and some of these uh, uh, fabric roles. First about the fabric edge nodes. A fabric edge node provides onboarding and mobility services for wired users and devices include fabric enabled wireless LAN controllers and APs because wireless LAN controllers should connect this uh, to these fabric edge nodes, okay, and also the access points. It is a Lisp tunnel router or XTR. XTR means both ITR and ETR, means ingress tunnel router, egress tunnel router, okay. In Lisp terminology, we have two important role or two important terminology, ingress tunnel router, egress tunnel router. We receive the traffic on the ingress tunnel router. We are encapsulating the traffic to the egress tunnel router. In egress tunnel router, we are de-encapsulating the traffic, okay. It is a Lisp tunnel router, XTR, that also provides the Anycast gateway, endpoint authentication, and assignment to overlay host pools, uh, for example, with a static or DHCP, as well as, as, well as group-based policy enforcement. Actually, uh, uh, for traffic to, end, uh, to fabric endpoint, we apply the group-based policy. We can say a fabric edge first identifies and authenticate wired client through 802.1x. Assume that we have one PC connected uh, to the access layer. Let me to show you. This is the fabric edge node. PC1 connected to the, uh, for example, this device. After authentication with 802.1x, okay, actually, the fabric edge node should identify this endpoint in order to place them in a host pool. Uh, or for example, after that, it can place them in the SVI switch virtual interface and also VRF instance. An scalable group SGT assignment here. After authenticating, we are assigning to this PC, to this client, one uh, a scalable group tag. It then registers the specific EID host address, that is MAC or slash 32 IPv4 address or slash 128 IPv6 address with the control plane node. You know that when we authenticate the PC1 in the fabric edge node, uh, we, here we will have some uh, functions. First, maybe this PC re is residing in one VRF, okay, or in one SVI. And also after re, uh, authentication of this PC, we will receive the tag from the, uh, for example, ICE, and then we assign the tag to the traffic of this PC, SGT tag. And after that, we should, uh, in, uh, with the help of Fabric Edge Node, we are registering the uh, specific IP address of this PC in the SD uh, access fabric control plane uh, 
uh, node okay actually this is the for example mapping server we are sending that if you want to receive to the ip of pc1 you can use my routing locator address okay for identifying the pc1 we can use mac address or slash 32 ipv4 address slash 128 ipv6 address as the endpoint ID identifier a fabric edge provide a single layer 3 anycast gateway that is the same svi with the same ip address on all a uh, fabric edge node for its connected endpoint and also uh, perform the encapsulation and de-encapsulation of host traffic to and from its connected endpoint okay it means that uh, here for anycast gateway we have one svi interface with same ip address on all of this uh, fabric edge node and because of that that each system okay can use one of these a, a, a any cast a layer 3 ip addresses as its default gateway you know that the layer 3 boundary in the sd access is uh, residing in the uh, uh, for example fabric edge nodes because of that it is possible that from each of the vlans okay we have one uh, customer one client connected to each of these uh, switches because of that we need to have the svi interface on all fabric edge node with the same ip address okay and this is the uh, function that we call it layer 3 anycast gateway same svi with the same ip address means interface vlan 1 with the ip address of 192.168.1.1 24 on all fabric edge node for its connected endpoint and also performs the encapsulation and the encapsulation of host traffic to and from its connected end points okay an edge node must be either a cisco switch or rotor operating in the fabric overlay i explained it before but for now you know that when we receive a traffic from pc1 uh, for finding the destination uh, or the receiver r look we should send the request to the mapping server or mapping resolver after receiving the r look of destination okay we can encapsulate traffic from the ingress tunnel rotor or switch to the egress tunnel rotor or switch and in the egress tunnel rotor or switch the de encapsulation should occur and finally we will have the original packet this is the process that you learned about it don't forget each of the egress tunnel rotor means each of these uh, switches when have uh, some endpoint identifiers should register them in the uh, control plane node in the sd access fabric or in the mapping server the next component is the fabric control plane node i explained it before a fabric control plane node is a list map server and map resolver ms and nr mr with enhanced functions for sd access such as a fabric wireless and sgt mapping it maintains a simple host tracking database to map eids to routing locators or r looks the control plane host database maps all eid location to the current fabric edge or border node okay and it is capable of multiple eid uh, lookup types ipv4 ipv6 or mac address the control plane receives registration from fabric edge or border nodes for noun eid prefixes from wired endpoint and from uh, fabric mode wireless lan controllers for wireless lan client okay wireless client it also resolves lookup requests from fabric edge or border nodes to locate destination eids and update fabric edge nodes and border nodes with wired and wireless client mobility and r look information control plane uh, devices must maintain all endpoint host mapping in a fabric a device with sufficient hardware and software scale for the fabric must be selected for this function a control plane node must be either a cisco switch or a rotor operating either inside or outside the sd1 fabric we learn about the mapping server and mapping resolver in the previous video briefly and we will learn about it with more detail in future the next role is the fabric border nodes okay fabric border nodes are least proxy tunnel rotors or pxtrs pxtr means proxy ingress tunnel rotor pitr or proxy egress tunnel rotor or petr we call them pxtr okay that connect external layer 3 network to the sd access fabric and translates reachability and policy information such as vrfs and sgt information from one domain to another there are three types of uh, border nodes first internal border 
or, uh, for rest of company connects only to the known areas of the organization okay for example wireless LAN controller firewall data center actually when we talk about the internal border this device connects uh, our sd1 uh, or sd access fabric to known areas of the organization like other wireless LAN controllers firewall data center or some other parts okay then default border means out uh, connect uh, uh, us to the outside outside connects only to unknown area outside the organization this border node is configured with the default route to reach external unknown networks such as internet or the public cloud that are not known in uh, to the control plane nodes and finally internet plus default router anywhere connect transit areas okay as well as known area of the company this is basically a border that combines internal and default border functionality into a single node actually here you can see that we have internal border because it is connected to the uh, server farm dc or uh, network services actually our fabric with the help of this fabric border node and this fabric border node uh, connected to the known area but if you connect to the unknown area like the cloud like the uh, for example internet this will be the default router because here we need to configure only a default route and also uh, we have some uh, some fabric border nodes that connect uh, to both of these two type of areas known and unknown we call it internal plus default border rotor look at here internal border rest of company default border outside of our company means for example internet internal plus default border means anywhere the last component is the fabric wireless controller or wlc a fabric enabled wireless lan controller a connect APs means access points and wireless endpoint to the SD access fabric. The wireless LAN controller, controller is external to the fabric and connect to the SD access fabric through an internal border node. A fabric wireless LAN controller node provides onboarding and mobility services for wireless users and endpoint connect to the SD access fabric. A fabric wireless LAN controller also perform PXTR means PITR and also PXTR registration to the fabric control plane on behalf of the fabric edge and can be thought of as a fabric edge for wireless client. The control plane node maps the host EID to the, con uh, to the current fabric access point and fabric edge node location the access point is attached two okay in traditional wireless deployment the wireless LAN controller is typically centralized and all control plane and data plane wireless client data okay traffic needs to be tunneled to the wireless LAN controller through the control and provisioning of wireless access points or cap web tunnel in SD access, the wireless control plane remains centralized, but the data plane is distributed using VXLAN directly from the fabric enabled APs. It is so uh, important for us. Look at here. This is the traditional, as you can see, the left figure is a traditional wireless. When one wireless client sends the traffic and this traffic received by the access points, traffic will be tunneled to the wireless LAN controller with the help of CapWeb data tunnel. And after that, again, it will be a tunnel to the egress, uh, for example, access points and the traffic after the receiving this access point, the encapsulating. And it means that we should tunnel all data packet to the wireless LAN controller. And or after that, again, the, from the wireless LAN controller, uh, it, the traffic should be a tunnel to the wireless, uh, for example, access, uh, wireless user. OK, but here we have different condition, as you can see about the control plane we don't have any difference but about the data plane as you can see when we receive traffic in the access point okay this access point traffic will be tunneled with VXLAN okay to the egress uh, AP okay actually this figure illustrates a traditional wireless topology compared to an SD access wireless deployment as you can see, Fabric APs establish a VXLAN tunnel to the Fabric Edge to transport wireless client data. 
okay through uh, tra tra traffic through the weak land tunnel instead of the cap web tunnel actually here for control tra for control traffic again we use cap web in the sd1 look at here in traditional wireless we have two cap web tunnel first one cap web tunnel for control plane and one for data plane but here as you can see we have cap web tunnel for control plane traffic between the access points and wireless LAN controller but for data plane we are using directly weak stand tunnel and it has uh, efficiency in compared with the traditional uh, for example wireless for this to work the ap must be directly connected to the fabric edge or a fabric extended node Using a weak LAN tunnel to transport the wireless data traffic increases performance and scalability because the wireless client uh, data traffic doesn't need to be tunneled to a wireless LAN controller via CapWap, as in traditional wireless deployment because the routing decision is taken directly by the fabric edge. You know that here the fabric edge with the help of mapping server or mapping resolver directly can identify where should the traffic tunnel and because of that here we don't need to forward the traffic to the wireless LAN controller with the uh, for example cap web tunnels in addition sgt and vrf based policies for wireless users on fabric ssids are applied as at the fabric edge in the same way as for wired users wireless client or ssids use regular host pools for traffic and policy in enforcement the same as wired client and the fabric wireless LAN controller registers client e e eids with the control plane node okay as located on the uh, for example edge okay don't forget here we have many details that uh, i don't want to talk about all of them in this video for now we should understand that in traditional wireless okay we are we have two type of cap web tunnel uh, one for the control one for data between wireless LAN controller and the uh, access points but here we have the two tunnel first the cap web tunnel between the access points and wireless LAN controller for control traffic control plane traffic and also for example we want to manage these access points okay and also we have one encapsulated uh, or VXLAN tunnel between the uh, for example and uh, access points for data traffic okay here as here as you can see when we receive a traffic in the first access point because uh, we can find the our look of the destination or receiver device we can directly forward the traffic with the tunnel VXLAN tunnel uh, to the receiver uh, for example fabric AP don't forget this is fabric ap what does it mean this is one of the components of the sd axis fabric here we have fabric edge fabric ap you should connect fabric ap directly to the fabric edge and in some cases to the uh, for example uh, for example some special device that we call them fabric extended node now we can better understand the five basic device roles in the fabric overlay control plane node fabric border node fabric edge node fabric wireless LAN controller and intermediate nodes all right now let me to explain about the sd access fabric concepts first topic is virtual network or vn the vn provide virtualization at the device level using vrf instances to create multiple layer 3 routing table vrf instances provide segmentation across ip addresses allowing for overlapped address space and traffic segmentation in the control plane lisp instance id are used to maintain separate vrf instances and in the data plane edge node add a vxlan vn id to the fabric encapsulation here you can see the encapsulation of lisp and vxlan you know that we use lisp in, in the control plane and vxlan in the data plane in the control plane with the help of instance id and in the data plane with the help of a vxlan network identifier okay or vn id we can separate the traffic of each segment and finally we will have multiple virtual networks as you can see here in this fabric now we have vna vnb and vnc this is like the 
traditional VRFs and you know that each VN has its control plane and also its data plane and again let me to emphasize that in ST axis we use the Lisp in control plane and VXLAN for encapsulating the traffic means the data plane virtual network maintain a separate routing and switching table for each instances the next ST access fabric concept is the host pool. A host pool is a group of endpoints assigned to an IP pool subnet in the SDA access fabric. Fabric edge nodes have a SVI or switched virtual interface for each host pool to be used by endpoint and users as their default gateway. It means that here, for example, in this edge or in this edge node we can configure multiple SVIs for example SVI interface VLAN 1 interface VLAN 2 and interface VLAN 3 each of them okay has a one specific IP address and this is the default gateway of some of the computers or some of the devices connected to that uh, fabric edge node okay actually fabric edge nodes have a switch virtual interface SVI for each host pool to be used by end point and users as their default gateway the SD access fabric uses EID mapping to advertise each host pool per instance ID means for example for each VN for each VRF we have we can have multiple a host pool and uh, when we want to advertise them or register them in the control plane in the mapping server we send the host pool with the instance id actually here we have for each vrf different uh, eid to uh, our look mapping okay and uh, you know that uh, uh, this allows host specific slash 32 slash 128 or mac uh, address advertisement and mobility host pools can be assigned dynamically using host authentication such as 802.1x and or aesthetically per port okay you will learn about the host pool with more detail in future but for now as a review we can say each node use a switch virtual interface or SVI with IP address mask and etc per host pool okay fabric uses dynamic EID mapping to advertise each host pool per instance ID fabric dynamic EID allows host specific slash 32 slash 128 and Mac advertisement and mobility host pools can be assigned dynamically via host authentication and or aesthetically per port host pool provide basic IP function uh, functions necessary for attached endpoint don't worry about the detail for now you can uh, remember you can uh, for example save in your mind that one of the functions that we have in the SD access fabric is host pool one of the one uh, other is the virtual network but in, in future step by step you can better understand the detail of each of these uh, concepts all right the next st access fabric concept is the scalable group a scalable group is a group of endpoint with similar policies for example the uh, for users or the endpoints that work in one part of one company okay the st access policy plane assign every endpoint or host to a scalable group using trustsec sgt tags Assignment to a scalable group can be either static per fabric edge port or using dynamic authentication through AAA or RADIUS using Cisco ICE. The same scalable group is configured on all fabric edge and border nodes and scalable groups can be defined in Cisco DNA Center and Cisco ICE uh, and are advertised through Cisco TrustSec. There is a direct one-to-one -one relationship between host pools and scalable groups therefore the scalable groups operate within a vn by default the fabric edge and border nodes include the sgt tag id in each week's lan header which is uh, carry uh, carried across the fabric data plane this keeps each scalable group separate and allows SGACL policies and enforcement. You will learn about the SG access control list in future, but for now, let me to say that after authenticating the users, okay, with the 802.1x, we will receive 
a tag or SGT for that user. Okay, and in, when we want to encapsulate the traffic of that user with the VXLAN, we will add the tag of the, that user and also the tag of destination in the uh, VXLAN header. And in the past, the, with the SGACL, we have control over, over the forwarding of this traffic from one department or from one uh, group to other scalable group. Here we have some details, but it is so easy to understand that with scalable groups and with SGT, we have control, easier control about the security policies. And you know that when we wanted to configure access control list, as I mentioned before, we should not we should uh, for example verify everything when we wanted to add one link one line into the acl or remove uh, from the acl but here you can easily say or configure in the cisco dna center between the scalable group one and scalable group two okay i don't want to have con connectivity that's it everything automatically configured like the acs like other policies in the devices and because of that this is so important feature related to the uh, policy plane of the SD access. Actually, nodes use scalable groups to ID and assign a unique scalable group tag SGT to endpoints. Nodes uh, add nodes means fabric edge nodes or border node adds as SGT to the fabric encapsulation. SGTs are used to manage address independent group based policies and edge or border node uses SGT to enforce local scalable group ACLs or SG. ACLs. A scalable group is a logical policy object to group users and or uh, devices. The next ST access fabric concept is the Anycast gateway. The Anycast gateway provides a pervasive layer 3 default gateway where the same SVI is provisioned on every edge node with the same SVI IP and MAC address. It means that, for example, we can configure interface VLAN 1, okay, in all of the edge nodes with the same IP address, okay. This is the Anycast gateway. This allows an IP subnet to be stretched across the ST access fabric. For example, if the subnet 10.1.0.0/24 is provisioned on an ST access fabric, this subnet will be deployed across all of the edge nodes in the fabric, and an endpoint located in that subnet can be moved to any edge node within the fabric without a change to its IP address or default gateway. Uh, this essentially stretches this subnet across all of the edge nodes throughout the fabric, thereby simplifying the IP address assignment and allowing fewer but larger IP subnets to be deployed. In essence, the fabric behaves like a logical switch that spans multiple buildings, where an endpoint can be unplugged from one port and plugged into another port on a different building. And it will seem as if the endpoint is connecting to the same logical switch, where it can still reach the same SVI and other endpoints in the same VLAN. Actually, Anycast Gateway provides a single layer 3 default gateway for IP capable endpoints. Okay, similar principles and behaviors as HSRP, VRRP with a shared virtual IP and MAC address. The same switch virtual interface SVI is present on every edge with the same virtual IP and MAC address. Control plane with fabric deployment, uh, fabric dynamic EID mapping creates a host endpoint to edge relationship and when a host moves from edge 1 to edge 2 it does not need to change its default gateway this is the anycast gateway all right until now we learned about the physical layer network layer of the sd access now let me to explain with more detail about the controller layer okay as you can see in the controller layer we have dna center and also ice but dna center include two part or two component ncp or network control platform platform and NDP network data platform and also ICE is the identity service engine. The controller layer provides all of the management subsystems for the management layer. I will explain about the management layer but for now let me to say that the controller layer provides all of the management subsystems for the management layer and this is all provided by the Cisco DNA Center and also Cisco ICE.
This figure illustrates the different components that comprise the controller layer and how they interact with each other as well as with the campus fabric. As you can see here, here we have Cisco DNA Center, the version is not important. And also, as you can see here, we have two part network control platform or NCP and network data platform or NDP. Okay, let me to explain about them first about the network control platform or NCP or the automation part. Okay, this is the NCP. Okay, this is a subsystem integrated directly into Cisco DNA Center that provide all the underlay and fabric automation and orchestration services for the physical and network layers. NCP configures and manage Cisco network devices uses NetConf Yang, okay, or, or uh, with the simple network management protocol SNMP, or with SSH, or with Telnet, and so on, and then provide network automation status and other information to the management layer actually this is the automation part of the Cisco DNA Center with this automation you configure automatically the campus fabric with netconf with SNMP with SSH with telnet some other protocols and finally we are providing the accessibility okay to the campus fabric fabric to the Cisco DNA Center the next part as you can see the next component is the NDP or network data data platform or assurance part. NDP is a data collection and analytics and assurance subsystem that is integrated directly into Cisco DNA Center. NDP analyzes and correlates various network events through multiple sources such as NetFlu and switch port analyzer, uh, for example, a span and identify historical trends. It uses this information to provide contextu contextual information to NCP and also uh, to the, uh, for example, ICE, and it provides network operational status and other information to the management layer. Uh, NCP uh, should uh, configure the network and provide the network for the Cisco DNA Center, and here the NDP uh, should gather information about the uh, different features of the campus fabric, okay, and provide it for the Cisco DNA Center. Also, here we have some other details. Don't forget, NDP also has some relations with the NCP. Actually, it provides some information uh, for the network control platform. Also here, as you can see, in the controller layer, we have identity service engine or ICE. This is the identity and policy part of the controller layer, okay? About the basic role of the ICE, we can say the basic role of ICE is to provide all the identity and policy services for the physical layer and network layer, okay? ICE provides network access control and identity services for dynamic endpoint to group mapping and policy definition in a variety of ways, including using 802.1x or MAC authentication bypass MAB and web authentication for wireless clients, okay, web authentication. ICE also collects and uses the contextual information shared from NDP and NCP and other systems such as Active Directory and Amazon Web Services. ICE then places the profile endpoint into the co uh, correct scalable group and host pool. It uses this information to provide information to NCP and NDP so the user management layer or okay, user in the management layer can create and manage group based policies. ICE is also responsible for programming group based policies on the network network devices. Cisco ICE and the DNA Center, NCP and NDP, integrate with each other to share contextual information through APIs between themselves. And this contextual information is then provided to the user management layer. The NDP subsystem shares contextual analytics information with Cisco ICE and NCP subsystem and provide this information to the user in the management layer. The NCP subsystem integrate directly with Cisco ICE and NDP subsystems to provide contextual automation information between them. And Cisco ICE integrates directly with Cisco NCP and NDP subsystem, Cisco DNA Center to provide contextual identity and policy information information. All right, the next layer is the management layer. The Cisco DNA Center management layer is the user interface or user 
experience UI UX layer where, where all the information from the other layers is presented to the user in the form of a centralized management dashboard. It is the intent-based networking aspect of the Cisco DNA. A full understanding of the network layer Lisp, VXLAN, and Cisco TrustSec or controller layer Cisco NCP, NDP, and ICE is not required to deploy the fabric in SD access, nor is there is a requirement to know how to configure each individual network device and feature to create the consistent end-to-end -end behavior offered by SD access. The management layer abstracts all the complexities and dependencies of the other layers and provide the user with a simple set of GUI tools and workflows to easily manage and operate the entire Cisco DNA Center, hence the name Cisco DNA Center. Cisco DNA Center applications are designed for simplicity and are based on the primary workflows defined by Cisco DNA Center, design, policy, provision, and assurance. All right, now let me to explain about the Cisco DNA design workflow. The Cisco DNA design workflow provides all the tools needed to logically define the SD access fabric. The following are some of the Cisco design tools, network hierarchy, network setting, image management or image repository, and also network profiles. Let me to explain a little about each of them. First, network hierarchy. We use the network hierarchy to set up geolocation, building, and floor plan detail and associate them with a unique site ID. About the network setting, we use to it to set up network servers such as DNS servers, DHCP servers, AAA servers, device credential, IP management, and wireless setting. About the image repository or image management, we use it to manage the software image and or maintenance update, set version compliance, and download and deploy image. And about the network profiles, we use it to define LAN, WAN, and WLAN connection profiles such as SSID and apply them to one or more sites. This figure illustrates the DNA Center design workflow on the DNA Center dashboard. We can see the network hierarchy, network setting, image management or image repository, and also network profiles. About the SDA policy or Cisco DNA policy workflow, okay, it provides all the tools to logically define Cisco DNA policies. The following are some of the Cisco DNA policy tools that we have. For example, we have the option of virtual networks. Used, it used to set up the virtual networks or use the default uh, virtual network and associate various scalable groups. Access control. Access control or group-based access control used to create group-based access control policies, which are the same as SGACLs. Cisco DNA Center integrate with Cisco ICE to simplify the process of creating and maintaining the uh, scalable access groups. Also, we have application priority or application registry part. It used to configure QoS in the network through application uh, policies, okay, with application priority. Also, uh, here we can see the uh, traffic copy used to configure encapsulated remote switch port analyzer or ER span to copy the IP traffic flow between two entities to a specified remote destination for monitoring or uh, troubleshooting purposes. Also, dashboard used to monitor all the VNs or virtual networks, scalable groups, policies policies and recent changes. The next workflow is the Cisco DNA provision workflow. Okay, the Cisco DNA provision workflow provides all the tools to deploy the Cisco SD access fabric. The following are some of the Cisco DNA provision tools, devices or device onboarding, fabrics, fabric devices, host onboarding. Okay, let me to explain a little about them, about the, for example, devices, okay, or device onboarding. Here we have the option of, a, we can use it to assign a device to a site ID, confirm or update the software version and provision the network underlay configuration. About the fabrics, we can use it, okay, to set up the fabric domain or use the default LAN fabric. About the fabric devices or fabric administration, we can use it to add devices to the fabric domain and specify device roles such as control plane, border node, edge node, and wireless LAN controller.
And about the host uh, onboarding, we use it to define the host authentication type, static or dynamic, and assign host pools, wired and wireless, to various uh, virtual networks. Don't forget, here only we are reviewing. For understanding the detail, we should learn about the configuration in future videos. The next workflow is the Cisco DNA Assurance work workflow. The Cisco DNA Assurance workflow provides all the tools to manage the SD access fabric. The following are some of the Cisco DNA Assurance tools. Uh, for example, Health Score, Client 360, Device 360, Application 360, and uh, for example, other options. For example, we have Dashboard, we have Issue Menu. Okay, let me to explain a little about them. For example, about the Client 360, we use it to monitor and resolve client specific status and issues such as onboarding and application experience with links to connected devices. About the device 360, we use it to monitor and resolve device specific status and issues such as resource usage and loss and latency with links to a connected, uh, for example, clients. About the issue, we can use it to monitor and resolve open issues, reactive, okay, and or developing trends, proactive with client and devices at various sites. And also we can use the dash Board, okay, to monitor the global health of all uh, fabric and non-fabric devices and clients with scores based on the status of, uh, for example, various uh, sites. All right, now let me to review the software defined access or SD access. There are many operational challenges in enterprise campus network due to manual configuration of network devices. Manual network configuration chains are slow and lead to misconfiguration that cause service disruption on the network. And the situation is exaggerated in a constantly changing environment where more users, endpoints, and applications are constantly being added. The constant growth in users and endpoints makes config configuring user credential and maintaining a consistent policy across the network very complex. If policies are inconsistent, there is an added complexity involved in maintaining separate policies between wired and wireless network that leaves the network vulnerable to security breaches. As users move around the campus network, locating the users and troubleshooting issues also become more difficult. In other words, traditional campus network do not address the existing campus network's needs. With SD access, an evolved campus network can be built and addresses the need of existing campus networks by leveraging the following capabilities, features, and functionalities. First, network automation. SD access replaces manual network device configuration with network device management through a single point of automation, orchestration, and management of network functions through the use of Cisco DNA Center. This simplifies network design and provisioning and allows for very fast, lower risk deployment of network devices and services using best practice configuration. The next benefit is network assurance and analytics. SD access enables proactive prediction of network related and security related risks by using telemetry to improve the performance of the network endpoints and applications, including encrypted traffic. The next benefit is the host mobility. SD access provides host mobility for both wired and wireless clients. After that, we have the option of identity services. Cisco Identity Service Engine or ICE identify users and devices connecting to the network and provide the contextual information required for users and devices to implement security policies for network access control and network segmentation. The next benefit is policy enforcement. Traditional access control lists or ACLs can be difficult to deploy, maintain, and scale because they rely on IP addresses and subnets. Creating access 
and application policies based on group-based policies using Security Group Access Controllers or SGACLs provide a much simpler and more scalable form of policy enforcement based on identity instead of an IP address. The next benefit is the secure segmentation. With SD Access, it is easier to segment the network to support guests, corporate, facilitates, and IoT-enabled infrastructure. Also, we have the option of network virtualization. SD Access makes it possible to leverage a single physical infrastructure to support multiple virtual routing and forwarding or VRF instances, referred to as virtual networks or VNs, each with a distinct set of access policies.